The All Things Techie Podcast is a product of the Extreme Media Network. For advertising and sponsorship opportunities, please visit www.extrememedia.ie. That's X-T-R-E-M-E, media.ie. Making sense of the world of technology from an Irish perspective. This is All Things Techie. Hello, hello, hello. Justin Dawson with you. It's the All Things Techie Podcast. Tuesday, the uh, 12th of November. And apologies once more, listeners, if I haven't been around. It's been a very, very, very busy time. Um, Family is going to be growing soon to an extra member in the Dawson household. Um, So I won't be attending the um, Learning Technology Space Management Group, the LTSMG conference. That's taking place tomorrow. So we're on the eve of the LTSMG. And uh, I caught up with the guys earlier in the week. And they told me what to expect at the LTSMG 2019. Check it out. It's... Once again, it's rolled around to another Learning Technology Space Management Group conference. It's held every year. Uh, Adam has been given the role of uh, pretty pretty much telling us all about it because Jonathan has bailed out on us today. (laughs) Uh, But Adam, you have been involved in this for many years now. What's the... How many conferences have we done now at this stage? So I've been part of the exec team since 2016 when we hosted it at the University of Hertfordshire. Um, But yeah, I mean, I've been a member. I'm pretty sure I went to the very, very first one, which was about 25 years ago in Leicester. Um, So I've been a member for years and I've been to multiple conferences across, you know, lots of different universities across the country. Um, Yeah, really enjoyed it. And then uh, when sort of the call went out, uh, a couple of years back saying anybody want to host a conference I sort of you know jumped to the chance well I would say jump to the chance I I volunteered and uh, yeah it was absolutely really successful it sort of um, coincided with being asked to join the exec team and a bit of a rebrand of the group and stuff like that so when we run it uh, half a year we we're using all the new logos and the new way of doing things and a bit of a new structure for the group so yeah really really successful and uh, we kind of used it as a launch pad going forward. Now let's let's go back there. Twenty five years ago, yeah, uh, yeah. I I know even last year when I my first LTSMG we had about thirty to thirty five different trade stools I yep. think in the room. Yeah, how many would you have had back twenty five years ago? <laughs> so I, I think when it when it first started it, it was kind of a little bit of a smaller you know let's get a guy, load of people together and talk about some issues of the day I, I i don't recall there being any but there may there may well have been a couple of sponsors but as the group developed over the years um it it generally ran with about you know, average of about six six to eight sponsors i think there were there were times where there was more there was times and there were less um and it, as it moved around different places but um yeah so the university of warwick which we did in 2015 that conference there that was the first significant jump so that was up to about 25 i think um when we came to harvardshire we had a bit more space so we we just added more we we sort of filled the space we had which was really good gives you know gave us a lot more opportunity to showcase some different technologies um so that's that's kind of a good number for us we we had 35 last year we're at 31 this year i think mm-hmm. um again we're so it's, it's one of these conferences because it goes around to different venues it kind of has to flex and it, to to suit the location so yeah, we're we're actually in a really good position where it's sort of it's seen as quite a, a a good thing to do by manufacturers and vendors and other sponsors. So we must explain to our listeners, just in case some are not in the higher ed capacity, this this is all technology managers and audiovisual and IT managers coming together from not only UK and Ireland. I think we have some members in Malta as well, don't we? We've got members in Australia, the US, Singapore, Hong Kong, um, quite a few countries around the world. You know, not not vast numbers, but um, the majority of it is UK based. But um, 
yeah it's av learning space technology managers in those kind of roles within those institutions higher education institutions and the great thing is not everyone gets to go to integrated systems europe no not everyone gets to go to infocom and some people say infocom and ise it's very private sector trade based whereas we are specializing in the higher ed capacity we have questions uh, that we need answers to in higher ed that is sometimes missed at these trade shows and trade affairs uh, like like the size of ISD and Infocom. Yeah, so it's, uh, yeah, we, we, we tend to be very focused. So the vendors that turn up and the sponsors that come to us, they tend to bring technology that is very education focused. I mean, not all of it, but there's, there's a lot of overlap, but, you know, things that they are, they're, they're targeting education to sell to. So it's, it's a re- relevant technology to us, which is, which is really good. It's really useful to see that, that mix of stuff within you know, a sponsor of this exhibition. Um, the beauty of the LTSMG group really is you were saying about people don't get to go to ISE. Of our sort of unique selling points really is we, we fully fund it. You know, using the sponsor's money really, we, we can pay for everybody's hotel accommodation and basically look after them from the time they arrive in the, the host town city venue whatever uh, until they leave so it's, it's it's really good it does give people the opportunity to come along who don't generally get opportunity to go to things like that we kind of make it a good time you know it's good fun to go to there's a lot of interesting content within the presentations as well i mean this year we've got amazon as our keynote speaker talking about you know integration of voice control into you know, education and av services so that's really really interesting we've got a vixer as a big supporter of us so we've got ben doing a bit of a uh, an update for the members and we've got you know the world famous chuck espinoza turning up as well now, uh, there's been a lot of rumors going on about what chuck espinoza is doing at this so this is where i'm going to bring in dave dave is 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 leading up the hosting and um, the conference this year hello dave hi justin how's it going yeah so tell tell me like fair play to you uh on offering to host this um i, I remember adam tried to get me to host it in ireland and then i i seen how much the logistics were in getting something like this involved and i backed away slowly um this it really does i say it's a, it's it's a full year in the planning of of getting all these uh, participants to come to york college I love the way that whenever anyone uh, says to me about hosting LTSMG, they sort of say it with a, with an air of congratulations <laughs> um, and and perhaps sympathy. <laughs> um, but no, it's a really really exciting opportunity, and and in fact, um, I would say uh, it's not just a year in the planning; it's more like two years in the planning. Okay. Um, certainly, that's how it's been for us here in Cambridge. The first initial conversations that I had um, with Adam and, and Jonathan was just at the, um, the closing session um, at University of Hearts two years ago mm-hmm. um, when the guys sort of uh, pinned me in the corner and said, so uh, Cambridge 2019 then, uh, how do you feel about it? <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'd, I'd already made some noises about um, the idea of uh, the group coming to Cambridge at some point in the future. And it felt like 2019 was going to be the right time to host it here at the University of Cambridge. Now, last year was my first LTSMG in the Olympics uh, Park and having a a fantastic meal um, on the second night. You're not going to give away any surprises. We we mentioned Chuck Espinosa's name. I heard there was supposed to be a karaoke theme and then I heard it's been quietened down a bit so is there going to be a b Roki going on at the ltsmg this year well chuck is going to be joining us at ltsmg we're very excited about that but i uh, i think that it's, it's always good to leave certain elements of the program particularly the entertainment um as a surprise so let's not give too much away at this stage but you know who knows what's going to happen on that infamous uh wednesday night of ltsmg and now, of course, the, the, I always think logistically wise, it's getting everyone here at, t- to the LTSMG and also the transport, the accommodation and everything. And I guess being an older university, is, is the transport good around your university? 
Well, it's a good question. And in fact, that's actually been, been one of the biggest challenges for us guys organizing it this year is that it's quite a different setup um, sort of geographically in Cambridge than it is with most of the other universities that we visited that are um, what we know as more, more traditional campus university, if you like. Now, in Cambridge, it's very different to that. The university is spread all across the city. Um, it comprises quite a large part of the city, um, but it is rather spread out. So we've got roads and shops and, and parks and everything that, that split up the university and the colleges. Um, and it does make it a bit more interesting getting around. So um, the biggest challenge probably for us this year with bringing the event to Cambridge is actually going to be getting the 31 sponsors loaded into our, our city centre um, exhibition venue, which really is in the dead centre of the city. It's right next to the market square, right. um, which is a really central location. Um, but we've got a great team um, at the venue uh, who are used to loading in large exhibitions and events. So they're, they're going to be all over that for us. It, it, like I'm just looking at the, at the actual schedule here. It, it has, so I'm, I'm really interested in the uh, Amazon Alexa um, doing, doing the keynote uh, speech. Um, is there many campuses uh, across the UK, Adam and Dave, that, that are using the Alexa in, in their campus? I, I guess you are, Adam. So there's a few, yeah, who've been developing some some systems with Amazon. So uh, we're doing some proof of concept work with them. Um, so I've actually got uh, sort of a teaching room set up that does work by voice control, but it's a very it's very basic at the moment. But we just sort of try and trying a few things out. And I, I don't know, I'm sort of a bit you know unconvinced scalability that a teaching room is the right place for a and a you know, a little uh, echo dot to sit on the lectern, but actually meeting rooms. Um, I think there's a lot we can do with it. Uh, the University of Hertfordshire, for example, we use this Hearts, uh, Ask Hearts app. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's a bit of a triage. Any student just go on and ask, what well, you know, how can I, can I, you solve this problem for me? And he points you in the right direction. But actually in the meeting room, I mean, if you want to book a room, order some coffee or whatever, then, you know, potentially there is options that we can use that for so we're still trying it out there's a there's some universities i think in america that have used it within student residences so you know there's there's, there's something to ask it's very localized as well so you know alexa what time does my physics lecture start or something like that and it can give you the information sort of personalized to you um so you know there's a few things we're playing with at the moment it, it, it sounds like a, a something that i think it's going to roll over into the uh panel debate that's going to be later in the day um after ben and after mike broman there um because i always think in voice controlled areas like that you know we have enough difficulties with touch panels and basic controls with both lecturers and faculty members and students messing with our av equipment to add in voice control into a room. Well, I don't know. It's, 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 a, it's a strange thing, really. I mean, we, I'm sort of of the opinion. Um, I need to word this very carefully. So... It, don't worry, it's recorded. We can edit <laughs> So when you're at home, right, you know, everybody at home has got an element of smart devices now, you know, whether it's smart speakers like Amazon or, or, or the various equivalents there is. People have got Netflix, they've got streaming services on the TV, Sky Q and all that kind of stuff, right? So, you know, hive heating and lights and all that sort of stuff that you can control via your phone, your iPad, your voice. When people come into university and standing in a teaching room all of that ability that they've got to control everything at home seems to disappear and you know they there, there is the the perception there is a struggle to use some of the things that we do you know our touch panels are really really simple but you know we we have comments back that they're complicated to use so obviously our, our ui and our user experience in the rooms is not quite where it should be to 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 mimic what it's like to use your stuff at home so yeah, I, I think we need to make that experience for the academics in, in a teaching room really, really seamless. There should be no joining tax to go into a room and sort of start teaching. So we need to refine that. And if voice control is something that can help us do that, because it's something that people have in their home, then, you know, it's worth investigating, if nothing else. Mm. Now, coming back to you, Dave, now we, we mentioned that Ben and, and Chuck is, is 
going to be from Ibiza are going to be at the LTSMG this year. Is Chuck doing a CTS prep course beforehand? That's right. We've been fortunate that at the university we're hosting a three-day CTS prep course um, on the Monday through Wednesday. Mm -hmm. um, that's taking place at uh, Robinson College, um, just slightly more on the outskirts of the city. It's a lovely venue. Uh, and it's really exciting that we're able to to host the course and with Chuck himself. Now, to both of you guys, mainly Adam, who's got, who's representing John at at the moment because he he bailed out on us. Is, <laughs> is this something that could be tapped into in the future with with the LTSMG? Do you think that it it could be an opportunity for people that don't have their CTS to say, well, guys, if you want to come over, we can run a bit of a CTS prep course attached to LTSMG or would that be just too long of a of a, a week-long event for the LTSMG? It's one of those things isn't it I mean being out of the office for three days for some people is quite hard work um, being out of the office for five to do a prep course and then a conference after that you know could could be impossible it could be quite easy so it's it's one of those things we kind of need to look at and kind of need to you know work with a VIXA just on timings and locations you know if, if, it, if it works like it did this time where you know we the prep course could run in Cambridge just before our conference which was you know really kind of fortunate there was a little bit of wiggling in there but it was it was kind of fortunate that we could make it come together um you know but it's something we can look at in the future if it if it you know, I, I think we've mentioned as well the like the tech managers training. You know, that would fit really nicely with us, and I think mm -hmm. so. It's 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 just investigating with the VIX of whether that's possible and how that how we come about getting that getting them booked together and making sure that they get enough people attending to make the course a viable option for them. Now, is there anything on these trade stalls that both you guys are really looking forward to? I know you get to play with toys every day, Adam. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna aim that question at Dave. Well, I get to uh, to play with a, a, a fair selection of toys as well, which is great. Um, I'm hoping that I do get some time to to go around the stalls this year because we've got such an exciting and varied lineup of, uh, as as Adam said, 31 sponsors this year. Um, I suppose one of the first ones that jumps out of me, uh, it has to be Mersive. Um, they're really pushing the boundaries in terms of um, wireless presentation. Mm. And it, it seems every few months there's a new feature on their Solstice product that's, um, that's really worth looking at. Really good that I'm going to be missing it, but I'm, I'm on baby watch, you know, for the next. It, it would have been too close uh, to, to, to say to my wife, oh, by the way, I'm um, going away for three days gallivanting. It's, it's all work related, but uh, with. Well, yeah, well, uh, you know, it happened to me last year. I mean, I had a four-week-old baby when I was turning up to, you know, setting up LTSMG. So, you know, I, I wasn't around as much as the other guys were hoping, really. You know, I was sort of like drifting in and out as they're trying to like logistics of 35 people coming in with trucks and everything. And I'm just like, oh, yeah, I've got to go now because uh, <laughs> I've got to get home. God, I should have thought of that one uh, nine months ago. Yeah. It does take a lot of planning now. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, it does. It does. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Um, of course, I'm going to be looking forward to seeing all the tweets, all the the photos. Of, you have the LTSMG Facebook page. You have the hashtag of LTSMG. And, of course, the website, uh, LTSMG. Uh, I'd better make this sure. LTSMG.co.uk. Yes. Uh, yeah. I was going to say org.uk, but it's .co.uk. Yeah, the hashtag I, is LTSMG19. 19. 19. Okay, right. Okay. Um, and... Wish you the best on it, uh, Dave. Fair play once again for, for setting this all up. Uh, I hope you enjoy it as much as this, the planning that went into it. Yeah, we're really, really looking forward to, to welcoming um, all the delegates over to Cambridge in a couple of weeks' time. Um, it's going to be a very different event to uh, last year at Loughborough London. Um, the classical city of Cambridge and the University of Cambridge, we're really looking forward to welcoming everyone over. Technology from an Irish perspective. This is the All Things Techie Podcast. It is indeed the All Things Techie Podcast. Yes, 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 yes. So, so many things have been happening around the world of technology, including Avixa issuing. I like this, listeners. Avixa issues. 
the latest edition of the CTS Certi- 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 Ugh, can't speak tonight. The Certified Technology Specialist Exam Guide, third edition. The guide uh, features updated and extended coverage of the new technologies. For more than 30 years, Avixa has administrated the CTS program, which recognised worldwide as the leading AV professional credential. There are three CTS credentials, General CTS, which I have, Design CTS-D and Installation CTS-I. There are currently 12,000 CTS holders globally, and over 2,000 of them are CTS-D or CTS-I holders, and uh, only, I believe, eight or nine CTS holders in Ireland. This, in this third edition of the CTS exam guide, they've updated and extended their coverage of AVIC te- technologies such as this, and at the same time simplifies the explanations of difficult technical concepts. Sent Andy Cedar, author of the CTS exam guide, third edition. In addition to featuring even more of AVIC's ever expanding suite of AV standards, the guide presents a global reach to terminology and measurements. The guide covers all current CTX exam objectives, including how to conduct a site survey, develop a, an AV project scope, troubleshoot and repair AV solutions. Um, but it also uh, incorporates des- designated sections on a VIXA's display image size for 2D content in audiovisual systems and audio, video and control architectural drawings symbol standards. That's probably the new things that's in the latest edition of the uh, CTS exam guide and uh, I say a lot of new questions there as well so uh, I recommend anyone that's studying the CTS maybe want to update on the the new book. Irish Research Council to stage live projection show in Dublin City this week for Science Week 2019. To mark Science Week 2019, 10th uh, to the 17th of November, the Irish Research Council will stage a live projection show at Bernardo Square, Dame Street in Dublin 2. The light show will display the work of researchers funded by the Irish Research Council. The show will go live and will be on display every evening from 6pm to midnight until Sunday the 17th of November. I must try and get in and have a look at this projected from the adjacent dublin city hall the show will be visible on the side of the well-known dublin city council building on bernardo square the live show features questions inspired by the work of irish research council awardees funded under the council's uh, Lorette and Colesk awards scheme it aims to raise public awareness about the importance of research being done into areas of vital human interest the questions included are, can we devise new therapies for cancer that resist existing drugs? How can we reduce water bone infection outbreaks? And why is seafood the key to smarter urban consumption? I want to see this light projection show. I'll try and get some photos and stick them up on the All Things Techie website, www.allthingstech.ie. Air the Irish mobile phone company and um, of course um, they have offered 10 euro uh, tariffs 9 euro 99 tariffs I can't wait to be out of my mobile phone tariff listeners I am currently being charged 65 euro a month ridiculous amount of money I can't wait to be out of my tariff uh, and be able to switch to this uh, new tariff uh, which is just internet only I'll stick the uh, information up on the show notes on the old teeth techie website uh, but air is behind the scheme so you go onto the website and just sign up to the new nine euro 99 tariff and i think it's all you can eat data and phone calls as well which is really really in, uh, a good incentive and i think really good incentive for students uh, and the likes uh, they don't offer any upgrades of phones or anything like that it's just if you want a cheap tariff but air launches the ireland's largest 5g network across 10 cities and towns air today launched uh, its new 5g mobile network which has gone live in 10 towns and cities across the country beginning with the 100 5g sites across ireland's five largest cities 
Dublin, Cork, Limerick, Galway and Waterford as well as Carlo, Casabar, Dundalk, Drogheda and Kilkenny. It will allow air customers to enjoy the unrivaled speed and reliability that 5G's offers with peak speeds of over 1 gigabits per second. Another 100 sites will be launched in the coming weeks bringing the coverage to Athlone, Bray, Ennis, Letterkenny, Sligo, Tralee and Trim in time for Christmas. A further 100 sites will be added early in the new year to bring the total number of towns and cities with air 5g coverage up to 20. 5g is available to air customers on a range of 5g devices including the samsung a90 5g the samsung s10 5g and the samsung note 10 plus 5g and the huawei mate 20x 5g with prices starting from only 99 euro uh, air ceo caroline lennon said i'm delighted to launch air's 5g network giving our customers widespread access to the next generation of mobile connectivity um, and more details on the all things techie website about that new uh, changes Facebook has said it's still reliant on users to flag issues that it may have missed. Facebook has admitted that it's unable to track all political adverts on its platforms as the company faces continued pressure to ban them entirely. You know, I was watching a brilliant uh, documentary on Netflix about Cambridge Analytica and my goodness, like it really puts things in perspective of how many accounts were manipulated what stats were behind cambridge analytica and how many elections has that affected is absolutely uh anyone's guess listeners but uh <laughs> really scary statistics on uh, from cambridge analytica i'll try and find the name of the documentary and put it up on our show notes Audio visual from an Irish perspective. This is the All Things Techie Podcast. Now, from uh, sin- oh, I always forget how that image uh, ends. Mysterious WhatsApp battery drain on OnePlus has users confused. This is from Silicon Republic. Reports from OnePlus owners experience significant battery drain because of WhatsApp has sprung up globally with no clear cause. If you own a OnePlus phone and have noticed your battery drain much faster than usual, you're not the only one. A number of reports have appeared on the company's own user message boards as well as Reddit claiming that WhatsApp has started draining their batteries significantly more than other apps. OnePlus owners have also taken their frustration out on the WhatsApp Google Play Store page. According to Android Authority, problems first seem to occur after the latest WhatsApp update to version 2.19.308 2.19.308 and both android 9 and 10 on oneplus phones i see whatsapp have also brought out a new privacy feature where you can uh, fingerprint scan i tried it out i don't didn't like it if you have a phone that has a fingerprint scan function to get into your phone do you really need to have a security feature again if you want um to access your whatsapp it's was useful at times i I just thought like it was a bit of a pain and i said to myself my phone is already protected by a um a fingerprint scan so why would i want a a second one in uh, um other news i i see that copper leaf media listeners have brought out um a research into av awards and apparently the AV Awards are the hardest to win in Europe, while some other award schemes are dominated by the same companies every year. According to the independent, that's the key word, listeners, independent research by Copper Leaf Media. The AV Awards are the, in England, the ones that uh, I've been in twice uh, for European CTS Holder of the Year, and I got into the finals of that, and AV Professional of the Year, and I didn't enter the AV Awards for 2019. But the AV Awards are the most competitive in Europe, with just 4.43% of submitted entries winning an award, and are second only to the NAM, the National Association of Music Merchants Tech Awards, globally as the most difficult to win by this measure. However, some award schemes are dominated by the same companies every year. Well, I think the AV Awards is dominated by the same companies every year. That's a personal opinion by me. 10 companies have won uh, 65% of the RAVE, uh, Reader's Choice Technology Awards, and 8 companies have won 
47% of the Innovate Technology Awards based on the Analysts of Technology Category Awards over the last five years. These are among the findings of the AV industry's first ever research report covering what is described as the somewhat hazy world of industry awards by AV marketing agency Copperleaf Media. In the wide ranging 40 page document the agency reports on the 20 award schemes in Europe and North America. Research was conducted by telephone interview with the majority of award organisers and by online research. The report aimed to answer the three main questions. In the time, effort and cost worth is it against the potential exposure and entrant might receive? Is the judging process credible, making it an award that actually means something? Could there be bias or in, in the awards um, as well? And to answer these questions, Copperleaf, me, Copperleaf performed three ta key tasks. Research into how each ward is managed and judged. Analysis of how transparent the, uh, the process is and whether there is an opportunity for bias. And finally, review of what shortlisted and winning companies receive in the terms of exposure. The report also includes a history of all product and technology winners over the last five years in a an at-a-glance view of who won and which award when, in addition to a number of charts and tables summarising the finding for each award. Copperleaf Director Roland Hemming commented, Clients frequently come to us asking advice on which award to enter. While we had our opinions of course and plenty of experience, our advice was an, only an anecdotal at best, so we decided it's about time we had some real data to draw up upon. As nothing of that nature actually existed, we decided to do some research ourselves, which turned into be, out to be a fascinating process. So often we hear the mutterings of unfairness or bias about who won what, added fellow director Kira Leeming. This is the first exam attempt to uncover the truth about how all these awards really operate and what companies can really get out of them. And you know what, I'd love to hear our listeners' opinions on this survey now I, again again i love to have my hand on this survey um I apparently you have to buy the the full survey uh, but interesting the stats that i just read out and i'll put those stats um up on the all things techie website under our show notes but um apparently the, the report is available to download from the copper leaf uh, media website but it is 95 pounds to buy I love if it was I know it it costs to do this type of research listeners but if they could give some more information out to, to of which award categories are the best and which are not um I'm sure the information will become available over time on social media when people buy this awards research but one thing that bugs me listeners okay there is different AV awards the AV awards in London big awards costly experience if you're trying to fund it by yourself and um, if you're a big company people buy tables and it's they make a big night out of it it's a black tie affair there's hundreds of tables I think that in 2018 there was a hundred and ten odd tables in this massive venue in in the Grosvenor Park Hotel they now move venue this year Um but what I like in one of the awards that I won was the AV Nations Award, which is a Reader's Choice Award done online. Yes, there's no award ceremony, there's no dinner, and there's no champagne reception, etc., etc. But what means a lot to me is the fact that readers and bloggers and AV professionals around the world were able to vote on this free of charge. And then it was collaborated and there was different um, rounds and myself and Joe Way got into the finals and then I pipped him to the post. I don't know how, but that meant a lot to me because you, the listeners and AV people and people around the war world voted for me. Um, yes, same similar with judges and for the AV awards, but you have to pay into these awards and they the, the point is if you're an av professional um 
as an individual trying to submit your entry on your own, it's costly experience. Um, there's the AB Technology Europe Awards that's only started in the past two years or three years. And then there's Rave who literally go out and go to different trade shows and they they vote on on what's the best trade store stand. And if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think any of these um, companies at at the trade shows are buying into the rave awards so sure you as a company have to buy your entry into these awards i honestly personally believe no you shouldn't i think if there's an awards that it should be okay if you want to go to the ceremony whether it's in london whether it's in germany um amsterdam uh, the, uh, the first AV Tech Europe Awards was after ISE. Now it, it took place in London last. But I think, okay, if you want to go to an awards ceremony, fine, buy your dinner or whatever the case may be and have a great night. Should you have to pay 200 plus pound sterling to enter an award as a company or as an individual? I don't think so. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Uh, you can tweet me at Justin or Dawson. You can use the hashtag All Things Techie or visit our website www.allthingstech.ie. Tech, tech, technology. technology from an Irish perspective. This is the All Things Techie podcast. That's all for this episode of the All Things Techie podcast. Uh, Simon will be back with me next episode. Uh, a very quick episode. Um, who knows when I'll be back because like, baby number two is on the way. Um, for those attending the LTSMG conference, enjoy yourselves. Have a drink for me because I'm not attending. Um, in the next couple of weeks, I'll be changing a lot of nappies um, and uh, I will be back with you with more episodes before the Christmas period uh, talking about the best tech gadgets to buy for for Christmas. I was looking through a list and uh, just some of the things that might pop up, you know, um, energy saving bulbs, internet of things, light bulbs, uh, gimbals, Fitbits and watches that are smartphone compatible. One that really interests me, in-ear uh, headphones, uh, wireless Bluetooth headphones, um, lenses for your uh phones uh do you want an action camera gopro hero black 399 dollars no i don't want one um smart watches no one that really interests me the one thing that did really sort of pique my interest was a headlamp for 40 dollars i have a great headlamp actually um i can't even remember who makes it I'll, I'll find out for you and put it on the show notes and um but what would you be your smart device that or technology device that you would like for Christmas? Let us know on the All Things Techie podcast. And um, for me, Justin Dawson and Simon and all the team, thanks for listening, and I'll talk to you next time. Make sense of the world of technology from an Irish perspective. This is All Things Techie. The All Things Techie Podcast is a product of the Extreme Media Network. For advertising and sponsorship opportunities, please visit www.extrememedia.ie. That's X-T-R-E-M-E, media.ie.